Assassin snails, which are not actually a snail, they're a whelk in fact, from Southeast Asia, are going to live for about two years and grow to about an inch. They are, I would say, a low care level, really, and super cool. They are freshwater and are going to enjoy most of our subtropical and tropical tanks, enjoying temperatures between 21 and 28 degrees. Uh, 7 to 8 pH and on the hard side because they need calcium for their shell growth. They're going to really enjoy clean water so make sure we're keeping the, the water clear from them. And obviously a cycle tank with no ammonia and no copper either. They'll do well on a range of smooth substrates so rounded gravel or sand is ideal for them. And have that beautiful cone shaped kind of uh, yellow and black pattern which is why a lot of people will know him as a bumblebee snail the tube out the front is their siphon which they use for respiration and to detect prey and at the bottom of their antennas is where you'll find their eyes their flesh is a light gray so you can see the the foot there the bottom of the snail that it moves about on that is a light gray color and they do have a trapdoor that they can close over to protect themselves if they feel threatened they are widely available, so not hard to get hold of, which is part of their appeal, I guess. And they are male and female specific. So you need two to make babies. Well, at least two. I would recommend getting a group of at least six if you plan to breed them. That will help to ensure you get at least one male and one female. But they don't breed in excessive numbers like some snails do, pest snails, I guess. Which again is another part of their appeal. It means you're never going to be overrun with them. And if you do find you have too many, you can share them with your pals or sell them or whatever. If you find a couple locked in a close embrace, occasionally bumping together, they are doing what, <laughs> what you think they're doing. And they can do it for a long time too. I've seen it take up to a day and they'll move all around the tank while they're courting. You could be concerned that they may be eating one another when you first see it, but they are not cannibalistic. They don't eat their own kind. So uh, it's actually breeding behavior that you've got. The eggs look like shark eggs, like little mermaid's purses. And if you look really closely, you can sometimes see the baby snail moving about inside of them. They are laid singly, normally in protective places, like gaps in this wee heater guard here, bottom of plants, crevices in rocks, stuff like that. But uh, if they don't have that option, they will lay them anywhere. Once they are placed, it's gonna take two months for them to hatch and the baby snails will drop down into the substrate where they will remain for another good long while until they grow large enough and confident enough to reveal themselves. It's worth the wait. Juvenile assassin snails are like super cute miniature clones of the adults and are just a joy. If anything in the hobby is going to put a grin on your face, well, a young assassin snail will do it for sure. There is no way, as a hobbyist anyway, to identify which is a male or a female when they are young or fully grown. And it is going to take about six months for them to reach adult size. They are opportunistic feeders, so you can offer them the likes of bloodworms and daphnia. However, they are also ambush predators, so you'll often find them buried half down in the substrate, searching for prey. They'll be keen on anything that's protein rich and will probably feast on dead fish as well. Dead snails and shrimp, obviously, too. Whether they eat live shrimp, I highly highly doubt it i think they would catch a sick shrimp and eat it in fact i have another video about um keeping shrimp in a community aquarium that i'll link at the end of the video and in the comments down below where you can clearly see thousands of shrimp living alongside hundreds of assassin snails and i've never witnessed them catching a live healthy shrimp they are carnivorous though so they're not going to eat algae or feast on your plants 
And famously, they are good at controlling populations of pest snails, or so-called pest snails, like ram's horns, pond snails, and bladder snails. I have seen them gang up on bigger snails before, which is interesting to watch. Almost like a gang of wild dogs chasing down prey. And they can be fast when they want to be, which is obviously quite desirable if they are going to predate on other snails in the aquarium in the wild. For the end of the video here, I am going to show an assassin snail doing what it does best. So if you're not keen on the more brutal side of nature, these are maybe not for you and I'd maybe quit the video here. Fair warned. Aside from their antennas and their siphon, they also have another retractable proboscis, which you're going to see right there as it probes for an opening in this ram's horn. When they're half buried in the substrate, they extend it and feel about for something that they can eat. But when they're predating on another snail, they actually inject it into the flesh and eat the other animal alive. Not for the faint of heart, maybe, and not nice, but it is the niche that the assassin snail has carved for itself in order to be successful and very very successful it is there comes that proboscis again and you can see it going into the snail there i'm going to cut it short at this stage because it's demonstrated the point but i guess we don't need to see any more so there we go the assassin snail or the assassin wilk if we want to be more accurate beautiful and interesting brutal but a very good way of controlling your snail population probably better than using a fish it's not going to have as large a bio load and will continue to control the population all of its life fascinating in its own right though and relatively easy to keep should it wipe out your entire population of snails you can always keep it going on blood worms and the likes you could keep a separate culture of Pest snails, I don't call them pest snails, ram swarm snails, pond snails or bladder snails for the purpose of keeping these guys. Easy to find, fun to watch and a great wee addition to a planted tank.